Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing good. In this video, we will discuss the anatomy of the temporal bone. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Starting with some general information about the bone. The temporal bone contributes to the lower lateral walls of the skull. It contains the middle and the inner portions of the ear and is crossed by the majority of the cranial nerves. The lower portion of the bone articulates with the mandible, forming the temporomandibular joint of the jaw. Let's have a look. This is the lateral view of the bone. And the bone shaded in brown is the temporal bone. This is the superior view of the base of skull. And this blue shaded bone is the temporal bone. The temporal bone can be divided into three parts. Squamous part, tympanic part, and the petrous part. Let's have a look. This is the lateral view of the bone. And the part shaded in yellow is the squamous part. In green is the tympanic part. And to look at the petrous part, we need to see the medial view. So this brown shaded part is the petrous part. We will discuss each of these parts separately and see what all anatomical features they possess. Let's start with the petrous part first because it has most of the features. This part is also called the pyramid because it is shaped like a trihedral pyramid with the base facing externally and the apex of petrous part facing anteriorly and internally towards the sphenoid bone. The internal opening of the carotid canal lies at the apex of the petrous part. We will discuss about the canals at the end of the video. So let's have a look at these parts first and then we will continue further. This is the inferior view of the bone. And this is the petrous part. This is the apex of petrous part, which faces anteriorly and internally towards the sphenoid bone. This opening which you can see is the opening of the carotid canal. Further, the petrous part has three surfaces and three borders. The surfaces include anterior surface, posterior surface, and the inferior surface. And the borders include anterior border, posterior border, and the superior border. Let's have a look. This is the medial view of the bone. And pink shaded part is the petrous part. This red outlined part is the base of the petrous part, facing externally. And this light brown shaded part is the apex, facing anteriorly. This black outlined part is the superior border. In brown is the anterior border. And in orange is the posterior border. The surface between the superior and the anterior border is the anterior surface. And between the superior and the posterior border is the superior surface. We will look at the inferior surface later in the video. These surfaces and borders have important features, so let's discuss about them one by one. Starting with the anterior surface of the petrous part. It forms the part of the middle cranial fossa. The anterior surface of the petrous part has a small depression near its apex, called the trigeminal impression, which lodges the ganglion of the trigeminal nerve. Lateral to it passes two small grooves, a medial groove for the greater petrosal nerve and the lateral groove for the lesser petrosal nerve. They lead to two openings, a medial hiatus for greater petrosal nerve and a lateral hiatus for the lesser petrosal nerve. The arcuate eminence is present lateral to the hiatus. The petrosquamous fissure separates the squamous and the petrous parts on the anterior superior surface of the latter. The bone surface between the petrosquamous fissure and the arcuate eminence forms the tegment tympani, which is a thin sheet of bone. Let's have a look. This is the dorsomedial view of the bone. And this triangular area outlined in purple is the trigeminal impression for the ganglion of the trigeminal nerve. This light brown outlined groove lateral to the trigeminal impression is the medial groove and the hiatus for the greater petrosal nerve. And this blue shaded groove is the lateral groove and hiatus for the lesser petrosal nerve. Lateral to this hiatus, the arcuate eminence is present, outlined in dark brown. We discussed that the squamous and the petrous parts are separated by the petrosquamous fissure. So this black outlined part is the petrosquamous fissure. 
This area between the petrosquamous fissure and the arcuate eminence is the tegment tympani. With this, we complete the anterior surface of the petrous part and move on to the next surface, which is the posterior surface. The posterior surface of the petrous part has the internal acoustic opening leading into the internal acoustic meatus. It allows for the passage of three important structures, namely the vestibulocochlear nerve, facial nerve, and the labyrinthine artery. Let's have a look. This is the medial view of the bone. And this surface marked is the posterior surface. This hole which you can see is the internal acoustic meatus. This completes the posterior surface and we move on to the last surface which is the inferior surface. The inferior surface faces the base of the cranium and gives off a slender tapering styloid process for attachment of the muscles and the ligaments. There is a thick process called as the mastoid process which lies posteriorly. This process contains mastoid air cells. They receive air from the tympanic cavity with which they communicate by means of the mastoid antrum. The medial surface of the mastoid process bears a deep mastoid notch. A deep groove for the sigmoid sinus is on the inner surface of the mastoid process. Let's have a look. This is the lateral view of the bone. And this slender downward projecting process is the styloid process. This thick process lying posteriorly is the mastoid process with this deep mastoid notch. Do you know how the mastoid air cells look like? Let's take a look at the cross-sectional view of the mastoid process. These small holes which you can see are the mastoid air cells. And they communicate through this mastoid antrum encircled in yellow. This is the medial view of the bone. And this deep groove on the inner surface of the mastoid process is the groove for the sigmoid sinus. We will look at all the sinuses later in the video. Between the styloid and the mastoid process is the stylomastoid foramen, transmitting the facial nerve. And lastly, the deep jugular fossa lies medially to the styloid process. Let's see them. This is the inferior view of the bone. This is the styloid process and this is the mastoid process. Between them is the stylomastoid foramen. We discussed that later to the styloid process is present deep jugular fossa. Located here. With this we complete the surfaces of the petrous part. Now let's discuss about the features of the borders of the petrous part. First we have the anterior border. The anterior border forms a sharp angle with the squama in which passes the musculotubal canal leading into the tympanic cavity. The canal is divided by a septum into two parts. The upper canal for tensor tympani lodges the tensor tympani muscle and the lower canal for the auditory tube. We already looked at the locations of these borders here, so now let's discuss rest of the features. This is the cross-sectional view of the bone and this is the musculotubal canal. We discussed earlier that it is divided into two parts, so let's see those parts. This again is the cross-sectional view. As you can see, this is the musculotubal canal divided by this septum. This upper canal is for tensor tympani muscle which passes through this canal and attaches with the handle of malleus. And this lower canal is for the auditory tube. Next we have the superior and the posterior borders of the petrous part which we will discuss together and then we will look at the features. Starting with the superior border. The superior border separates the anterior and posterior surfaces. It bears the groove for the superior petrosal sinus. The posterior border joins the basilar part of the occipital bone and with this bone forms the groove for the inferior petrosal sinus. Now let's have a look. So this is the superior view of the base of skull with all the sinuses. This is the superior petrosal sinus. And later to it is the inferior petrosal sinus. Rest of the sinuses present are mentioned here. This completes the petrous part which was longest of them all. Now let's discuss about the second part of temporal bone, the squamous part. The cerebral surface of the squamous part is marked by the impressions of cerebral gyri 
and an ascending groove for the middle meningeal artery. The external surface of the squamous part is called the temporal surface. It gives rise to the zygomatic process which articulates with the zygomatic bone. Just below the zygomatic process there is the articular fossa for articulation with the mandible. The articular tubercle is present in front of the articular fossa. Let's have a look. This is the medial view of the bone. And this is the cerebral surface of the squamous part with impressions of the cerebral gyri. This groove here is the groove for the middle meningeal artery. This is the lateral view of the bone. And as we discussed earlier, the external surface of the squamous part is called the temporal surface. The temporal surface gives rise to this zygomatic process. Let's see how this process articulates with the zygomatic bone. This is the lateral view of the skull. Here the zygomatic bone is present. And this is how the zygomatic process of the temporal bone articulates with this bone. Here we discussed that just below the zygomatic process there is the articular fossa for articulation with the mandible and the articular tubercle is present in front of this fossa. So this is the articular fossa and in front of it is this articular tubercle. This is how the articular fossa articulates with the mandible. With this we complete the squamous part and move on to the third part of the temporal bone which is the tympanic part. This part fuses with the mastoid process posteriorly and with the petrous part anteriorly. It forms the external acoustic opening leading into the external acoustic meatus. There is the tympanosquamous fissure which separates the tympanic and the squamous parts. This tympanosquamous fissure is further divided into two fissures. The petrosquamous fissure anteriorly and the petrotympanic fissure posteriorly. Lastly, the tympanomastoid fissure separates the tympanic part from the mastoid process. Let's have a look. This is the lateral view of the bone. And this is the tympanic part which forms the external acoustic meatus. We discussed that there is the petrosquamous fissure present anteriorly. So this fissure outlined in black is the petrosquamous fissure separating the petrous and the squamous part. This fissure outlined in yellow is the petrotympanic fissure which separates the petrous and the tympanic parts. This is the mastoid process. And here the tympanomastoid fissure is located which separates the tympanic part from the mastoid process. With this we complete all the parts of the temporal bone. Before concluding this video let's discuss about the canals of the temporal bone. The canals include the carotid canal for internal carotid artery facial nerve canal, corda tympani canal, semi-canal for tensor tympani muscle and the semi-canal for the auditory tube. Let's have a look. This is the cross-sectional view and these markings are the passages of the canal. This light green line indicates the passage of the carotid artery through the carotid canal. This dark green line indicates the passage of the facial nerve. Yellow line for the corda tympani canal. Blue line for semi canal for tensor tympani muscle. And lastly, this pink line for the semi canal for auditory tube. There was a lot of information about this bone, so to remember it perfectly, I suggest you to write these features on a notepad. With this, we complete the anatomy of the temporal bone. So that is it for this video, guys. Don't forget to subscribe the channel and follow us on Instagram. Links in the description.